you're looking at a, um, a boom uh, or a crane that I put on the bed of my service truck. Um, and originally I just wanted a, a boom that would lift, uh, you know, just some, some heavier objects that I myself don't want to lift and put in the truck. So by any means, it wasn't supposed to be a heavy lift boom. Um, it was built with just some scrap and it was based on uh, an older crane design that they, they don't do anymore, a cable design. Um, and a cable design cranes are, are pretty cheap to make, uh, but there is some safety factors in there that make them not as safe as a, as a hydraulic crane would be. Um, a hydraulic crane would, would have cost a whole lot more, uh, and in this instance, I really did not spend a lot of money on this particular build. It's based on uh, an old cable crane like the auto cranes, and it utilizes three winches. Uh, one winch will pick the boom up. Uh, one winch will be mounted on the boom itself. It'll be the lifting winch and the other winch um, gets semi-modified and will cause the boom to rotate and we'll get to that in a little bit. So basically I'm just going to show you some slideshows here and uh, we'll just kind of cruise on through and, and talk about what you're looking at and uh, go from there. One thing you'll notice is the bed of this truck was not designed for a crane. Uh, so we had to sacrifice this compartment to basically sit a tower on and you'll see in the next pictures by what I mean We started out by cutting a hole in the, in the bottom so we could put these uh, two before steel tubing Across the frames and, and bolt them in and that's going to be what we weld the base of the tower to so it can handle all the weight And right here you can see the base of that tower and it's just a half inch sheet of, of metal with a trailer axle bearing um, this is the tubing that uh, that I was just talking about, and it's what gets stuck to the bottom of the frame rails, and, and it's bolted in there. Um, this is kind of the bottom side of it. It's flipped upside down, and again, you can see the uh, the trailer axle bearing sitting down in there. Uh, that was just kind of a, an easy way to make this thing spin without a whole lot of friction. The uh, next picture, you can see some gussets down there. Uh, it just kind of helps strengthen it up. It's a little bit overkill, but uh, everything we build is overkill. And here is the, uh, the, the tower sitting on that uh, half inch plate right before we cut it and welded it to the tubing. And uh, here's the structure that, that the whole thing sits on. Uh, and this is uh, what gets tucked in that cabinet. And it's just another picture. We used a, a cheap plasma cutter to, to cut things up. Uh, it worked pretty well. This is kind of an interesting idea. The top of the tower has these bearings and there's uh, three quarter inch bolts going through them. Uh, and that post rides against those bearings on the top just to keep the friction down. Uh, and here's just a better shot. You can see there's a bearing on the top and a bearing on the bottom and the post goes up through the center of them. And uh, this was kind of an, another little trick is that's actually a moped um, transmission from a Honda Hobbit. Uh, more junk that uh, we had laying around and we just basically used it to reduce the gearing. Uh, so that when it's uh, twisting the tower around it doesn't um, it doesn't move as fast. It was quite fast by itself um, Those little harbor freight winches have auto brakes, but they are they're too quick for the swing of a boom So that's why we reduced it and uh, Next picture we just kind of showed a, a quick coupler that we made just put a pipe inside a pipe uh, welded some nuts on that inside pipe uh, and it has a little bit of flex in it kind of keeps it loose and nothing binds up and here it is all together You can see it's chain driven and uh, that's what turns it. This is just a, a shot of the structure um, from the outside and what it looks like now before it was painted. And uh, here's kind of testing phases, the tower sticking out the top and uh, or the boom, I guess, uh, or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and here's just another shot. Again, we just used a bunch of rusty junk metal and scrap that we had laying around. Uh, the pipe is actually about a half inch thick, so it's overkill in itself. This is just a hinge that we just kind of mocked up with more steel laying around. Uh, and here's it kind of together so you can get a better a better close-up. We also made a, a little jib that slides inside the boom so we can extend it another another three and a half feet uh, just for a little bit further reach. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to reach too far with it. Um, and this is how we kind of tied it all together. Just some plates on top and plates on the bottom. We used a thick plate on the end so that's where the torque is going to be. And we got it mocked up in a garage. We're just testing it out to make sure everything works okay and it does and it looks good. Here it is back in a truck again, this time with the motor controls. Uh, and again, it's just a winch, you know, nothing big, nothing complicated there. 
and uh, now we're back to the first picture and you know, obviously this project is not complete by any means and there's a lot that needs to be done to finish it up uh, I just want to give an update for some some friends that were asking questions about it but eventually there'll be another winch down there on the, on the bottom of the boom and that's going to do the picking um, and uh, I got some electronics that uh, I got to work out I'm not sure if I was going to do it wirelessly or if I'm going to do it uh, with a manual click click boom boom type switches uh, doing some research on online I think I can go wireless pretty cheap uh, and just use some contactor switches or some uh, reversing contactors that are that are made for winches um, I, the crane wasn't really designed to pick a lot uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if you couldn't pick up maybe a you know 800 pounds with this thing without any problem at all or maybe more than that um, I need to put an outrigger on it uh, you know anything with any kind of weight at all causes the truck to sag a little bit but uh, I'll keep you updated and I'll post videos and pictures when it gets completed so you all can see it in action.